We've been asked if we can shoot more films on natural venues. So who better to ask than Steve Hemingway, England international and European champion. As you can probably hear, we have a weir behind us today and Steve is fishing an idyllic looking peg and is putting together a cracking net of fish. Steve's reputation on natural venues really is second to none. I mean, you don't want to draw next to this guy in a match. Although weir pools are great for fishing in, they're not so good for filming in. So we'll let Steve have a couple more casts and then we'll go further downstream where it's a little bit quieter and Steve can run us through just how he's fished today. Oh, so this is a much quieter peg down here, Steve. Yeah, and another lovely looking Avon peg. Well, Steve, what a fantastic venue this is. Certainly worth me getting up early hours of the morning and traveling two and a half hours to. Yeah, it's a beautiful, diverse stretch of water. There's all sorts of swims. It's uh, just below Stratford. It's called Seven Meadows, and it's actually a day ticket water, so it's available to anyone who wants to come and fish it. Given all the lovely looking pegs along this stretch, why choose this peg in particular, just below a weir? Well, this time of year, the fish are looking for a bit more oxygen. It's been warm and, and you're looking for you know, broken water, uh, gravel swims, shallow swims, as opposed to somewhere deeper and steadier you might be looking for in the autumn and winter. So the peg we're on today, Steve, why the waggler? Yeah, it's ever so shallow close in. It, it, it runs off gravel and the depth increases as you go across towards the far bank cover. So with it being so clear as well, it wouldn't suit the pole. The, the fish would see the pole, it would spook them. It's just perfect for waggler fishing, all the flows across. So I see today you've just kept it very simple. In fact, you've only got two rods set up, two waggler rods. What's the difference between the two rods? Yeah, so one's for fishing full depth or as good as full depth and one's for fishing half depth. Uh, quite often this time, even on a shallow peg like this, quite often these fish will come up to half depth and um, it's just a matter of chopping and changing between the two and, and seeing where the fish are on the day. And even during the day they'll change, you'll catch shallower and then later on you'll catch deeper. you just got to keep swapping and see where you go. So today Steve, how, how deep the actual peg been today? It's, it, it, it changes as you go down. At the top of the peg, it's probably only about four, three or four foot deep. As you go down, it gets to about six or seven foot. So I'm guessing you started on the deeper setup today and... Yeah, yeah, started on a deeper setup, fishing quite a long way down my peg in the deeper water. Um, tried my shallow rig over that and then really towards the end, I finished up fishing at the top of my peg where, although it's my shallow rig, I'm fishing nearly the full depth, which is probably about three, three and a half foot. I see you've used two identical rods today. Yeah, the 13 foot Acolyte Ultras is what I've used. A, a beautiful rod, quite soft, which is perfect for some of these little fish I've caught today. But also it gives you half a chance if you, you know, you're lucky enough to catch a, a two or three pound chub, they will handle them with no problem whatsoever. I have noticed today on more than one occasion, Steve, that uh, you really don't hold back when you strike, when that float goes under. Yeah, and again, that's the beauty of the Acolyte Ultra. It's soft, it allows me to do that, which I like to do to make sure I set the hook. You know, without a doubt, one of the best rods I've ever fished with. So today's session, Steve, is pretty much how the Avon normally fishes in the sense that you caught lots of small fish to start with and then you had a few better fish towards the end. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it ties in with the gentle feeding at the start. Basically, what you're trying to do is catch everything that swims at the start. So you're picking off these small fish, small dace, small roach, odd little chublets few bleak in there as well, been a bit of a nuisance at times, but you know, that's the nature, the all, the all way. And then as the match goes on, you thin those out, you might up your feed and eventually you start catching some better stamped fish. Some, some, I've had some nice roach and one or two half decent chub. So what would be the normal tactics on a venue like this, Steve, in, a, in an actual match? Well, as, as you can see, it's a very diverse type of venue. There's different types of swims, there's feed chubs, there's shallow runs, there's deep pegs. So you name it, it comes in, it, you know, it's, it, it's pole, stick float, feeder, uh, straight ledge, you can catch some chub on meat, something like that. And of course, waggler, which is what we've decided to come and have a go at today. So I've noticed today, Steve, you've had a lot of missed bites and a lot of small fish. How have you avoided them today? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously I've fished single maggot, double maggot and single caster and double caster. Um, but without a doubt, the best bait today would to avoid the little fish and give me a chance of a better stamp roach or, or chub 
was double caster. Just less bites, but bigger stamp fish. And obviously that's something you'd employ in a match. You'd, you'd take that tactic exactly into a match, would you? Yeah, that's right. It, it's one of them things, there's a time and a place for everything. There's a time when you're going to have to be fishing single baits and maggots just to try and keep catching some fish. And then there's other times when you're going to put a double caster on, you want to be targeting something a bit better, give you a chance of winning. You're confident that at times you had chub in the peg? Yeah, I think there's been, there's been chub in my peg all day, but with it being so clear and so many little fish there, it's very difficult to, you know, actually get one to take your bait and um, you know it's just one of them things on a clear river difficult. So you've had a cracking net of silvers today Steve if you could fish the peg again would you do anything different? Certainly today mid-session when I, I changed to maggots that, that didn't work at all it, there was too many small fish in the peg so that that didn't work so I wouldn't do that again um, Every time I tried to increase my feed, it didn't really spur any chub on, so, you know, I wouldn't do that. And um, the only other thing I would probably do if I was going to come here again, I'd try uh, a bit of waggled meat. It might give you a better chance of catching a bonus chub. Just lunch of meat? Yeah, just feed a few cubes of meat and just stick one on a, like a size 16 up. Well, thanks for letting us film you today, Steve. Um, just next time, can you pick a venue a little bit closer to me? Yeah, yeah, I'll try. There's a couple of places a bit nearer to home, just as scenic as this. I'm sure we can find somewhere to go and do a little bit of something different next time.